Hey race fan, Brian Davis Races, and you can too. Today I'm going to break down everything you need to know about all the stuff on Zwift screens. Hey, Brian Davis, Brian Davis Races. I'm going to show you Zwift on an Apple TV, and I'm going to talk about a little bit on their mobile app called the Zwift Companion. So let's get into all the different things that are on the Zwift screen because there's a lot of things and it can be really confusing. So when you first open Zwift, you're going to start by pairing it to your power system, whether that's a smart trainer or some other piece of equipment, but you get those things paired up, also your heart rate monitor. And when you jump into Zwift to get all that figured out, that's a different video, so I'm skipping over that pretty quickly. But when you get into that, you're going to see some missions or some special events in the upper left-hand corner. And uh, there's lots of different things happening on Zwift, including the Zwift Academy and all sorts of different events uh, through the holidays. There's definitely some events uh, that you can join. So you can make sure that your device status is connected there in the middle section. Now I'm using my Apple remote, which is awful. So I kind of hop around sometimes when I'm doing this on screen. But here's the two different worlds that are on today. New York is the daily one, and then Watopia is always available. And you can see the schedule in the right-hand corner called Guest Schedule Calendar. You can see which world will show up, but it's always going to have Watopia. Once you're into the Watopia, for example, you can go pick a route. So I like to pick routes based on the mileage and the elevation, trying to get as much elevation as I can in the shortest amount of mileage. Uh, I shouldn't say I always do that, but I do that when I'm looking to get a good hard workout in in a short amount of time. Otherwise, I'll go into training and I'll pick particular workouts. And they have them listed by time, 60 to 90 minutes, 90 minutes plus. They have them broken out by uh, different goals that you can reach like there's a four-week booster i've done a number of videos on the four-week booster uh, to get your ftp to climb and then lately they've come out with this thing called plans and these are longer term plans but if you were trying to prepare yourself for uh, a century or a season of crit racing or something like that you can enter into one of those plans and then you know what you're going to do every day that you go down to your basement to Zwift, for example, which is really handy. And I will say that about the four-week plan. It really does help to know what you're going to do and not have it be a mystery. Okay, in the right-hand corner, you'll see upcoming events. Now, this is really where the companion app shines. So if you go in the app store and download the companion app, you'll get this. When you first open, you'll have that first screen. And then if you're connected to Zwift and quote-unquote Zwifting, this section will pop up. Now, once this is up and running, I like this to see the event details more accurately than I do on the app of Zwift itself. So here you can create a meetup. That's a whole nother subject. But if you're looking for events, you'll go click on the bike icon. If you're looking for running events, click on the running icon. But on the bike icon, if you find an event that you like, you can see more details about what's happening, what the route is, uh, what the mileage is, what the different breakdowns are for A, B, C in terms of your talent level. So lots of different events always happening on Zwift. That's the advantage of Zwift. There's just so many people using it. There's always something going on. Okay, so here's the basic ride screen. Now when it populates, uh, by the way, if it's the first time you ever use Zwift, apparently just start pedaling and all this stuff shows up. All right, once you get all this up and running in the upper left-hand corner of the blue box, you'll see your power. That's your wattage that you're putting out. The cadence is how quickly you're spinning your pedals around and around. And then your heart rate, if it's connected, will show up under the beats per minute. Now, this is a really important part of Zwift, these power-ups. So they will appear in that circle, and these are the different things that may appear in that circle. So the big plus button are just extra points toward the game. The small plus button is less points toward the game. The feather makes it easier if you're on an incline for you to climb with less effort. The truck increases the effect of uh, drafting behind someone, the arrow boost makes it appear as though you're drafting behind someone even if they're not there. And then the burrito and the ghost I don't think are used any longer. But what? that doesn't matter. They're not used anymore. Okay, so let's get back into this screen. Now, in the left-hand side, you'll see the hilly loop if you're on a section that has a loop. Not necessarily hilly loop, but whatever loop you're on, you'll see that in the left-hand section. And this is the leaderboard for that particular event. And that leaderboard... That leaderboard will show who's done what. So in real time, the live results. So whoever has completed the hilly loop in 13 minutes and 11 seconds would get the orange jersey associated with hilly loop in this example. So on the bottom of that pop-up, you can see different colors and you can click through the different 
uh, routes or special jerseys that are available. Okay, now if you hit the up arrow on your keyboard, you'll get a little window of different things that you can do. You can change the camera angle on your avatar, or if you're watching someone else at any given time, you can change the camera angle on them. So in order to watch someone else, you just click on one of their names over on the right-hand side, and you should be able to watch as someone else. So let's talk about turning really quickly. So you can see on the bottom where it says Titans Grove, and then there's a timer going down. As long as I make a selection, I can, I, I know that there's a selection to be made when I see that. If I click the button, the mouse, the keyboard, whatever it is that you're using, depending on your device, then you can uh, make a selection to go left or right. But you have to do it before that timer spins down to zero or you'll just stay on the original route that you picked. Now hit the down button on your keyboard and you'll pull off a U-turn, which is super rad. Hit the M button and you'll be able to get into the group messaging. Uh, this is an Apple TV, so I did this with my voice, but just to show you where it shows up. Uh, right there, okay. So you can message everyone. Now, I'm not doing an event, I'm just riding along in Swift. This is an example of a ride-on, that big thumbs up that I got. Someone gave me a ride-on. Now, this is kind of a cool trick. In the app, you can go in here and double tap on that arrow on the map and you'll be able to give multiple write-ons at once or you can click into any of those circles and give someone a very specific write-on. Write-ons are a really important part of the Zwift community so I'd encourage you to learn how they work and use them a lot. So the function keys on your keyboard have a lot of different shortcuts. Here is a sh keyboard shortcut from Zwift Insider. You can just take a look at that. I will have a link to Zwift Insider and you can download all that stuff as well. The goal of this video is just give you a really rough overview and try to talk quickly because I know that you want to stop watching this and start Zwifting. All right, so when you see a lot of people in an area, that's where they're spawning. So all those folks are just joining the game. And you can see there's more examples of write-ons going on here. Uh, so in the upper right-hand corner, we didn't talk about that, there's the mini-map. And that has uh, a lot going on. So there's the elevation profile. There's where you're at in the screen. Uh, in the middle... There's your miles per hour, how far you've gone, the elevation that you've climbed, and the time that you've spent. The orange bar below that is your rider level. So I'm on level 23, and as that bar moves further over to the right, I will get closer to level 24. The blue bar to the right in the middle still says 1,343,763 are drops. That's fictional currency in Zwift. The more you Zwift, the more drops you get, and you can buy stuff, and we'll get into that in one second. But first, let's look into the menu screen. So if you want to pause Zwift, that's how you do that. You can jump back into the menu screen, and here you have lots of different stuff. Workouts, badges, pair, garage, settings, and then a couple other little things, like this one is the... Uh, let's see where my Apple... Okay, so these are the settings within the game, and you can make all sorts of changes here to the sound, the volume, the trainer difficulty is a whole big subject. Um, yeah. I'd encourage you to watch another video on that, but just put it somewhere in the middle or to the left. You definitely don't want it at the max. Pro tip. All right, the workout pain effect is slightly annoying to me, so I turn it off. It's at the end of an interval. It makes the sh screen appear as though it's shaking. I don't love that. So in the garage is where you have earned wheels and jerseys and shoes and socks and all sorts of things from the time that you've spent on Zwift. And then all those drops, that fictional currency, you can spend in the drop shop. So like I said, I had 1343 to spend. I'm going to pick up a set of wheels here just to show you how it works. Some of the wheels or equipment you're not qualified for if you don't have a higher enough level. And reminder, I'm only on level 23, so I cannot buy the NV 6.7s because uh, I'm not high enough level to do it, no matter how much drop currency I have. So I bought that set that of wheels. That's how easy that is. Now, this is my name. If you want to follow me, it's dot YouTube slash Brian Davis Races. And here you can adjust your FTP and your weight. My FTP at the moment is artificially, I think, I hope, a little bit lower than it normally is because I want my workouts in the off season to be a little bit easier than they need to be. So that's just what I do. Make sure you get your weight and your height correct. There are definitely huge implications on Swift if you don't get those things correct. So the Everest Challenge is what I'm currently complete, trying to complete. I'm 69% complete, and that has an um, amount of elevation that you've climbed in order to earn the Tron bike. Those are the bikes that have those glowing wheels. That's the only way to get it is to enter the Everest Challenge and then complete the Everest Challenge. These are achievements or badges. So these are the different things that I've earned over time. They just added those route ones recently. 
so you can see I've not quite earned all those. So these are all the power ones. I've done pretty well on the power ones, but the route ones I just started, so I have not earned very many of those. Okay, so now I'm watching this other person who I do not know, so thank you, Mr. Barry. Uh, so we're just following along with him. I wanted to show you some of the things over on the right-hand side. You can see that little blue icon with a Z on it. That, uh, from what I understand, means that's a Zwift employee. The one with the little bar graph looking thing, that means someone is doing a workout. Uh, the one with the phone means that they have Zwift companion app activated. All right, this is fun. If you increase your weight, your guy gets fat. And if you decrease your weight, your guy gets skinny. So that's me at 400 pounds and me at 100 pounds. I just wanted to thank everybody for watching this. This was not meant to be a to totally comprehensive video, but just give you an overview of some of the simple things. So uh, I just wanted to point out a couple other things. The the numbers over there on the right or screen on the right hand side, you can see the numbers fluctuating 1.1, 2.7, 3.3. That's watts per kilo. That is a crucial number as you start playing Zwift a bit more. So the weight that you enter into your rider profile versus the amount of power that you're putting out at that particular moment. So the weight watts per kilo is really important if you're doing an event or a race. Um, you can classify yourself as an A, B, or C rider based on your watts per kilo for your FTP. But that number over there, watts per kilo, is real time. So if you're in a group ride and the watts per kilo is supposed to be around two, that's what you should do to stick with the group. So that's just how that works. I wanted to give you uh, a little bit more detail about that particular section. All right, everybody, that is the Zwift screen breakdown. I want to thank you for checking out the channel. My name is Brian Davis, and the goal on our channel is to grow our sport, grow our fitness, and grow our knowledge. Hopefully, I delivered that to you today. If so, please do consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as a member of the Race Fam. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.